Hi, in this video I'm showing you how to create an appointment follow-up schedule table. So let's say for example we are prospecting or you are in a medical setting and you've got appointments and you want to schedule out future appointments and there's a duration that you have between those appointments. Let's say for this particular person, John Smith, we want to schedule two follow-up appointments but we want to space them out 14 days and we've got the corresponding ones for Fran, Rajesh, and Matt. And we want to create a table like this where we, where we can kind of list out those particular follow-up appointment days and have the correct duration in between. So you see John Smith should only have two and the duration is 14 days in between. So we have 14 days in between these two dates. Fran only, has only got one. We see this particular person, Rajesh, has five follow-up. So you see there's five instances or four, five records here. And each of them are spaced out seven days. So we can create this using Power Query and I'll show you how to do it. So here we are in uh, another worksheet where I have the table and I'm going to pull this particular range of data into Power Query. Now Power Query is available in Excel 2016 as is, but if you've got Excel 2010 or 2013, you're going to have to download it from Microsoft and enable it. So to bring up Power Query, we go under Data and take it from Table here. And it's going to ask where is the data for our table. Unfortunately, I had my icon, I had my cell selected out here. Let's cancel that. Let's go into my range of data here. So Excel, can, Excel is going to be a little bit smarter to pick it up. Again, from data, from table. And now it kind of picked it up correctly. My table does have headers. Click OK. And it's going to go open up the Power Query Editor window. Now within the Power Query Editor window, you're going to see that it picked up the table. And here I actually wanted to create a new column. So I'll go to add column and I'm going to create a custom column. Now in this custom column, I have to use some of the functions that uh, Power Query uses, part of the M code. And the particular function that I need to put in here is called list.dates. And this is case sensitive, so we have to put list.dates. And open parentheses. And the column that I'm going to pick out here, it's so the list.dates function takes three arguments and this is how it actually looks. Let me bring it up the description from the Microsoft website. So we have list.dates. So it takes three arguments I've mentioned before. It takes the start date. It takes a count. So basically that's how many instances do you want this to happen or bring back. And we have our step is our duration. How long uh, do we have in between? So in our particular example, we had our start date, our first initial date, and then how many follow-up appointments that we want, and the duration between. So that's going to fit into these three arguments. So let's go back into the uh, Power Query Editor. And we have our first date, so I'm going to double-click that to bring that in, comma, and we're going to have how many follow-up appointments. That's going to be our count and comma the duration between so so we close parentheses and in essence it looks like it worked because there's no syntax errors but you, as you can see if i click ok there's going to be some problems that we're going to have to take care of right they're going to there's going to be an error here and let's go through some troubleshooting here because it's looking at a date value but you notice that we have a date and time and this needs to change so let's go back up here to this particular step and change that into just a date. And we're going to insert that step there or we replace that. So it's asking us to replace that, so that's fine. So we replace that and we're going to go back to the add column step and see what happened here. It was still have an error, but the error is going to be different. And so it's saying that the type 14 value duration is an error. So this particular error is looking for a specific type in the duration argument part. So let's double click our gear icon and figure out what we need to do. So in our duration type, it's asking for a particular type to be inserted in, into this argument. And what we need to do is use another function. And the function that we're going to be using is this duration.from function. So let's put that in. So I'm going to type go in before this particular portion of the argument and type duration dot from open parentheses and close parentheses. All right, click OK. 
and we have our list and our errors disappear. So if I click on the blank space here, you can see that it's pulled out the list here, 16 to 120, and this is 114. The occurrence should only occur once, and we have 24, 211, 218. This occurrence should occur five times, but you'll notice that for each one I go to, it shows the first date, 16, which is 16. We don't want that. We want to we want to show the next occurrence here. This is 114. We want to show the next occurrence. This should be seven days past that, 121. So we have to go back into our custom formula here, or custom function here, and add a, another function. Let's separate these to actually make it a little bit easier to read. So this is going to be that third argument. This is going to be the second argument. Just add some some carriage returns. So the first argument here is this first date. So what I want to do here is add a duration between that first date. So it'll bring me back the first instance of the follow-up appointment. And to do that is actually another uh, M function. And that's going to be the date.addDays function. And this is what it looks like. So we have our date.addDays function, and it just takes two arguments, the, the, the date, and then how many days do we want to add. So date.addDays. So let's go back into Power Query. And right here, this is where we're going to add it, date.addDays. Open parentheses. So we want to add dates to the first date. So that's that's the first argument is the date. The second argument is that duration. How many days do we want to add to it? So we're going to click on that. Oops. We'll double click that. And close parentheses and comma. All right. So we're going to see that we had, let me just make this easy to read. I'm going to enter a carriage return here. So we had our three arguments for the list.dates function. We had the date. We had the amount of instances that we want to have that, that's follow-up dates, and we want to have the space, the duration from each date. That's our third argument here, right? So if I click OK, now if I click on each of the spaces here, you can see that it's filled that up. So we have two instances of follow-up days, and they should be separated out 14 days. So 14 days from 1, 6, 6 plus 14 is the 20th. You can see that there, and then from the 20th plus 14 is going to be February 3rd, right? So our second record here, there's only one instance, and it should be seven days from the 14th, which is going to be the 21st. So that fits it nicely. What we want to do now is we want to expand this out into its own separate rows. So I'm going to click on the two-sided arrow, and I'm going to click Expand to New Rows. And you can see Expanded to New Rows. You can see it's also replicated the names down here and the initial start dates there. Now I don't need a couple of these columns there. I just I don't need this column. I'll press shift and this column right click and remove columns. And maybe I don't even need this first date column. I'm gonna right click click and click remove, go to home and close and load. I'm gonna select close and load to dot 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 because I want to put it in this particular uh, worksheet. So I'll say existing worksheet Let's just put it here in column J. Oops, let's delete that. And just put column J here. So let's see if we can put it out here uh, in J1. Click load. All right, it put it up there. Well, it's a little bit far, so let's get rid of some of these columns. Select those columns, right click, delete. Oh, I forgot to do some things. You can see that Excel has brought back the dates as a serial number. You notice that's how the way Excel sees dates as serial numbers. Let's go back into our query editor or Power Query editor and change that. So what we want to do is we want to call these as dates. You can see that it's a in any type category. So we want to change that into a date and also give it a title. Let's say we'll call this follow up dates. Follow up dates. Press enter, click close and load, and now this should reflect that, right? And the beauty of this is that if we had to add additional things down here, we can refresh this table and it will go through all those steps to take care of that. So if, if I go under the cell, here's press tab, and maybe I'll add another date, 3, 3, 2018, press tab, Jane, uh, I don't know, Jane, 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 Joe, press tab. 
maybe give them give her three follow-ups seven days in between tab whoops I entered another cell here so let's not do that let's pull this table up a little bit and I would click refresh or I can right click refresh here this has refresh here I can click the refresh icon there I can go under data and click refresh and I'll do the same thing I'll refresh the particular Power Query steps. I'll just use right click refresh on the table here. Now you notice Jane Joe has been added. And seven days after March 3 is 310, and seven days after 310 is 317, and, and etc. 324. So that makes it easy to update data and have it reflected with just like a one button click. So this is the way that we can create a basic schedule follow up appointment table uh, based on some parameters here we have. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.